Yes, we do. We do, Brian. Go ahead. Okay. Well, that's. I, I don't want to make like I'm talking to nowhere. Um, obviously, <laughs> this is something that, that's very new uh, that I haven't done very much of is these uh, video online presentations. I'm more used to uh, doing the uh, in the meeting, so I apologize for that. But anyways, I, I suspect Bashad has already shared a little bit of my information on my background, what I'm doing now. And uh, this topic is probably new to a lot of people here in North America, unless you're affiliated with a lot of the big three uh, machining operations. So let's, let's just go to the next screen. Covers a little bit more about my background for people that don't remember what I look like. That's a picture from 216. And let's just get some definitions out of the way. I know in the lubrication field and, and a lot of fields we use jargon and, and the uh, MQF stands for minimum quantity lubrication. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a lot of people on the chat or area or, or the call that are involved with lubrication. But this involves a very minute amount of a pure fluid that, that goes to the cutting tool as opposed to uh, doing a lot of the flooded coolant that people are uh, used to uh, seeing nowadays. And again, it, lubrication reduces friction very basic uh, property uh, of fluids and a lot of benefits that come to this. So we'll, we'll go to the next slide. And, and where, where this kind of concept of minimum quantity of lubrication developed and uh, started was over in Europe. Europe uh, had a lot more restrictions than North America on the chemicals they used, their environment. So they decided to, to look at alternatives to, to go do this. And as I mentioned in my abstract, it, it was a combination of, of a couple of things. Uh, the fluids were available, but how do you get these fluids in such minute quantity to the actual working area uh, when you're machining? So that's what they did. That, that's what the, the two companies that I mentioned uh, who I'm working for now do. And, and actually in our production facility, we use a lot of this process to machine uh, a lot of the parts and dividers and, and everything else that we use for automatic lubrication uh, fluids. Let's go to the next slide. So when I'm talking about processes, I'm, I'm talking about uh, an air oil uh, type way to, to move the oil from a, a, a reservoir to the tool. And this is just the air moving and the oil staying in, in the steady state and, and not into any kind of uh, particle size. When you do an aerosol, it still uses the air, but you do uh, make particles out of the oil and, and break it up and then that's carried to, to the tool, and then it has to re-coalesce uh, at the tool uh, work uh, interface. Very similar, but not quite as, as much of an aerosol uh, when you're doing uh, uh, air mist systems that are used in industry, in the uh, petrochemical industry to lubricate a lot of their uh, pumps. This is what, what the industry calls uh, a single channel. And, and you can see over on the left-hand side, you've got the aerosol unit, you've got the air coming in, the oil reservoir, and you've got a tool. And 
there is one single channel. And this is where the air and the oil, which it gets slightly atomized, is put into the uh, working area. And, and then the tool comes in and, and, and does the cutting. And primarily, when, when you see this type of system, uh, it, it, it'll look similar to, to the uh, delivery systems for uh, flooded coolant, but it's used to retrofit machines that weren't originally designed uh, to do uh, MQL uh, lubrication. Now we get into the, to the more uh, complicated uh, uh, two-channel system. And this is typically put on a machine right from the OEM uh, build. And then it comes to the end-use customer already set up and ready to go. But this is not atomized. It is just the air uh, and the oil come down two separate chambers, down the work spindle, and meet, and, and then uh, at, at the workpiece uh, tool interface, and then you can start uh, doing your work. Talking about some uh, applications, uh, Sawing applications. A lot of the people in the metal fabrication, uh, in, in, in tube manufacturing, they, they need to, uh, or, or just in uh, general machining, they, they need to cut the, the raw material coming in into workable sizes. So they have to use these uh, saws. And, and what you get is external lubrication, but a very, very minute amount that goes on the blade and then that's transferred to, to the parts uh, at the work interface uh, to cut. It, it's almost a near dry machining. So if you're in a metal fabricating shop, uh, whether there's making uh, large uh, pieces of equipment or they're, they're cu again, cutting the, uh, the raw material coming in, you'll see uh, that there's not a lot of fluid uh, around uh, the cutting site, so the, the mess and the, uh, and, you know, and I'm going to cover this later, uh, uh, the difference between a minimum quantity application and a flooded application. So here, again, we talk about the turning machines, milling machines, and the uh, sawing applications, and, and people aren't familiar uh, with the industry, there's the type of equipment that's used. I, during my talk, I will not mention company uh, reference names. That, that is proprietary information, and if people would like to uh, find that out later, uh, they obviously uh, can uh, talk to me about that, and I can share that with you, both uh, in Europe and in uh, North America. The medical industry, uh, and that kind of brings up a, a, a little point. Uh, part of my uh, time being off work uh, in the last little bit is actually to have one of these medical devices and, uh, put in my body. I ended up getting a, a hip replacement. So if anybody's been into any of these machine shops, they're very, very clean. Uh, they don't want a lot of mess and contamination. And, and so that's, that's why uh, this type of uh, fluid application is very appropriate in, in this industry. Uh, aerospace, uh, for machining uh, a lot of the fuselage uh, components that go into uh, our planes and, and all the different type of uh, transportation uh, part of the aerospace industry, they use a lot of, of, uh, of this type of uh, work and 
you know, obviously in the U.S., I can be very specific that this is primarily on the uh, west coast of the U.S. And then the transportation industry, that's something that's uh, here in Ontario that we're, uh, we have an abundance of small part manufacturers, but we also have, have a number of, of the big three uh, powertrain operations, whether they're doing transmission parts or uh, engine parts. They have adopted this based, based on the work that their European counterparts did, and this has come to uh, North America. And then some of the other uh, industries, well, where, where, anywhere where, where you want to just get lubrication, uh, and the lubrication is, is enough to uh, not generate enough heat, so you do not need a lot of cooling, then that's, that's the ideal place to put this application uh, forward. Anybody new uh, uh, that is part of the uh, metalworking uh, production uh, area is, is very used to all of this type of uh, ongoing maintenance that you, ha you have to do uh, in order to keep uh, flooded coolants uh, safe and to avoid a lot of dermatitis and, and allergic reactions. Uh, also to uh, get rid of, because they only have a certain life. There's been, I, you know, from my experience uh, that I've had in the metalworking uh, fluid business, these coolants have come a long way over the last 10 years, but they still lend themselves to, to all of this uh, ongoing uh, issues you have to do to monitor and pay attention to it. You just can't ignore that, that it's just a, a simple water solution and we need to put it on with some additives, obviously uh, with the 5% type uh, uh, concentrations you put in and, and your way you go. You, you just can't do that anymore, especially in the large uh, applications where you've got these large central systems. Health protection, uh, a lot of people uh, end up being off work or part of the occupational uh, hazard uh, of working as a machinist, you, you do come across this. And, and, you know, this costs companies money uh, on their, uh, on their uh, workers' compensation uh, costs and, and, and premiums. So anything to help, you can do that. That's, uh, that, that's something uh, that the MQL uh, fluids do. This is a pretty complicated formula and, and people might, might take time to, uh, to look at it. But the, built, the real big thing you want to do is, is reduce that friction. And as long as you have the, the proper material uh, in between the uh, workpiece and the cutting tool, you do not need a, a, a water-based cooling other than the air uh, that comes through uh, the delivery uh, uh, devices. And, and that, that's, what'll, that's what'll happen. And you know, it, it's just a cascading uh, uh, effect. And it, it, it's, it's something that uh, people have been trained and used to uh, doing here in North America but that, that is starting to change when, when they look at the avenues of how can I do something better, uh, uh, I get more productivity, and it helps reduce my cost. Uh, cycle times, which is important uh, to, to, uh, for productivity. Uh, if, if you take a look at uh, and these are different parts, uh, different feed rates, and, and you can see that there's quite a reduction in, in, the, uh, in the cycle time. You do MQL machining and uh, coolant machining. And the, this is something that the industrial engineers in these machining or manufacturing engineers 
are always striving to reduce that uh, production time. Here it shows the uh, the the two uh, the two system deliveries in the pictures, and it talks about uh, energy savings. And here's an example of saving uh, 3,500 uh, US uh, dollars on on an application. Process steps uh, when it comes to uh, machining. One, one of the areas that sometimes, uh, based on the finishing, you, you, you have to polish. You, you, you do not have to do that with MQL. Again, they, they talk about the lower cost per piece uh, due to the cycle time and lowering the tooling costs. This slide covers a, a, a lot of the areas and you know, this isn't just a, a, a small sump uh, on one particular machine. If everybody's been into some of these large uh, machining operations, you'll have large central systems and all the ancillary uh, equipment that goes into uh, supporting that to feed uh, multiple machines. So when companies are doing retrofitting, this is a, a lot of the uh, floor space that is uh, being able to be used now, and they don't have to look after maintaining and looking after all of this uh, all of this equipment. And it covers uh, them. Uh, I know on some of the slide because uh, the uh, Bilomatic uh, people are from German. This is where uh, we have this slide from. So they they talk about the uh, descriptions of, of these uh, process components in uh, in German. Some of the costs associated uh, are, are shared down in, in the uh, lower left corner uh, for doing uh, that's involved that's, uh, that you don't see right away, but they're there uh, when it comes to monitoring uh, a 5% a emulsion uh, cooler. And it gets substantial and at the end of the day, uh, you can see at the bottom, it says the 650 US dollars per year on a machine. Uh, yes, you do have air uh, that you have to add into the equation now with the MQL, but it's definitely offset uh, the cost uh, when, when you look at the uh, amount of uh, fluid per hour that gets consumed. Brian, yes. sorry to interrupt you. Quick question here. Uh, one of the responsibilities of the coolant is removing the chips from the work area, uh, the contact yes. point of tool and workpiece. Uh, yes. Do you see any problem with MQL because there is nothing to move away chips far away from the contact point? The air does that movement. That's the, the, that's the mechanism that moves the chips away. Okay. So that's the only air who takes the responsibility of pushing away the chips. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, obviously there, there's a mechanical force and, and, and flooded fluid that, that, that does do that. We, we know that. But the important idea is, is to get the chips out of the area. And I, I do believe we, we cover, if not, some of obviously the costs involved with, with chip handling and, and not just the physical chip, but once it's contaminated, 
you have, you have to uh, get the uh, contaminated fluid off there and do all those costs. You don't get that uh, with MQL. Okay, thanks. Okay. A lot of reductions, and, and, and uh, I know that was the theme uh, of the Toronto STLE uh, when they, they put this education day uh, together. And th th this is something that's growing in, in, in North America. And uh, as people get exposed to it and resist the, the change that's always been accepted, then all these uh, reductions start uh, coming into play. So there's quite a bit there. Uh, I'm not going to read them word for word uh, because you know all, all of this uh, presentation will be available so people can have it to go back and, and, and take a look at it. I, uh, I will, I'm not going to talk uh, a lot about uh, the fluids uh, because I don't think this is the appropriate point. But maybe, maybe just to, uh, if people are on the call that sell fluids, they should be well aware uh, of these two technologies and, and the important properties uh, of them and, and, and why they're used and not used. Uh, the ester based, uh, because the uh, European uh, chemical companies uh, have always made synthetic esters. And, and, and that's what they've used uh, uh, for this uh, MQL type uh, fluid. And it, uh, it, I mean, it, it, it's also used in, in a lot of other uh, lubricants. Uh, ones that come to mind are compressor fluids. Some, uh, they're, they're used as, uh, to add uh, uh, for biodegradability. They're also used to help dissolve uh, some additives uh, that aren't very uh, uh, soluble in in, uh, in PAO type fluids. So that's where it comes. And then the fatty alcohols. Uh, there's one very, very specific application for this, and this is machining aluminum parts that have to be heat treated further down in the process. You, you, you want that fluid to still do the, the, uh, the properties of lubrication, but you want it to flash off and, and, and not uh, cause any uh, carbon or, or deposit issues on the uh, aluminum. And as I mentioned uh, in my uh, abstract, North America is looking at, at a different source of, of esters. They, uh, they do the uh, here in Canada, the, the rapeseed canola oil, and in the U.S. because they produce so much more of, of it, the, the uh, soya bean oil. And to be very specific, it's the ester that is formed in these fluids that, that uh, and, and it's based on uh, the content of oleic acid in the fluids. So this, uh, you know, it, it, it allows the, uh, uh, Fluid manufacturers just still sell some fluids, even though, uh, you know, their their use on this type of uh, application is reduced. They, they still can uh, sell some of the fluids uh, to the end user to help them out uh, with this process. There's a lot of studies that uh, have been done to compare the two. Uh, type of uh, processes, and uh, this covers all, all of the, the machine tool, maintenance costs, uh, cost of floor space, and uh, some of the cost savings, uh, again, are the lower energy, less fluid consumption, and, and longer tool life. That's, I mean, the, the tool life costs compared to the fluids are a lot more uh, when you're machining. So uh, if anything that can be helped uh, with tool life, that's, that's something that uh, businesses are always looking to do.
it's not a long presentation because it's just meant to to uh, to uh, introduce the the subject. Uh, again, I apologize for the uh, technical glitch, but uh, I'm open to questions uh, for this time frame and also uh, anything further afterwards. If if people would like to speak with me a little bit more uh, here in Canada, thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. I have a couple of questions. The, the first one um, is you showed a slide that said uh, using MQL uh, means that you can eliminate a lot of equipment in a lubrication system like reservoirs, uh, big reservoirs, filtration, recycling stuff. Uh, so right. if there is an existing lubrication system, the traditional one, the coolant one, the flooded one, and you want to convert it to MQL, what parameters do you consider to offer them a system that works uh, based on the MQL technology and performs the same and delivers the same part? So uh, obviously the, the, uh, the fluid for we, we, we all know comes you know, with very much flooded uh, with, with a flooded system. So you, you take that, you, you don't need the reservoir for that. And, and, and you don't need the type of dispensing equipment that you have. Okay. But retrofitting, you, 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 still, you still have to, uh, you know, put some sort of uh, device that will get the fluid okay. to that tool and workplace interference. And, and that, that's where the single channel system comes in. Uh, the only other thing you have to add on is, is the, uh, the cost of the actual uh, units. That, that form the, uh, the aerosol or, or the air oil mixture, that, that, that's, that's what you have to add on. So you do that. If you don't have all, all the other stuff uh, mm -hmm. that uh, they mentioned in that. So does that answer your question? Uh, well, yes, but uh, not completely. The question I think is more around how do you determine the oil air ratio uh, and uh, the, I don't know, liters per hour or liters per day consumption of MQL. Because in flooded system, you just pour the coolant on the contact soon, hoping that the coolant will go between the tool and the workpiece and lubricate the area. So now you mm -hmm. want to change it to MQL. So how much oil per hour, at what pressure, and what air to oil ratio? How do you calculate that? That's all calculated uh, from the equipment. Uh, we, we, we know that we have to, it, it's called mini flooding almost. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's not really, uh, uh, you know, because you, you are constantly putting that fluid there. Just, just the quantities that the uh, delivery system puts out is very, very, very small. Okay. So th that's, that's, how they, uh, that, that's how that system works. So you, you, you're, you're doing, uh, you know, you, it's not dry and, you know, it's not totally uh, flooded. Mm -hmm. there, there obviously is some working, uh, working out with, uh, with people, you know, when they first start this. And that's the assistance of, uh, of uh, ourselves where we're involved. And, and you know, we, we go in and, and study the process, what they're doing now. And, and work and how much fluid, you know, we have to get there mm -hmm. and, and, and how long, you know, the cycle times. That, that, that's all plugged in uh, to, the, uh, to the PLC uh, on, the, uh, on the machines. Okay. And then that's all back calculated. And, and then that dispensing equipment will, will, will put that fluid there. Okay. So okay. that it shuts off. Obviously, when you're not machining, it shuts off. No, I mean, that, that's similar to a flooded. But uh, there's obviously uh, the quantity uh, that you're, you're putting on there. Because remember, these coolants are 5% lubricant or additives and, and, you know, 95% water. So you're not, you, you know, you, you're, you're putting, uh, you know, some lubricant on there, but, but, but a, a lot more when, when you get right down to it, how much is going on there. Okay, good, thanks. So some other questions. Uh, we have a question here. 
that uh, can industries use it for high load, then uh, I asked the person to be more clear and they said like thick film needed to make the parts. So um, let me uh, put it this way, for, for operation application like broaching that we need a lot of EP to lubricate uh, the tool and workpiece. Can we use yeah. MQL? Not, a, not, a, not applicable, not applicable to, to broaching. Oh, okay, any other tough applications? Or what's the toughest application that MQL can be used on in metal working applications? So it's, you know, it, it, there, there's a whole bunch of different alloys that could do, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's, that, that's part that you have to uh, worry about w when you say toughness. Mm -hmm. that, that's for sure. Okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, no, broaching is still done by 100% by, uh, flooded need oil. Sure. In most applications, from, from what I, I've seen. They still have to do that because, again, the lubricity demand is so high. Definitely. It, it's not a coolant demand. It, it, it's a lubricity demand. So that's why uh, they're, uh, that's done that way. But, sure. you know, we're, we're doing stuff in the aerospace uh, uh, industry. Where they're doing, uh, you know, some pretty stuff, uh, things uh, like you say, uh, the major three are using it in their powertrain uh, engine plants and transmission plants. Mm -hmm. on, on, on a whole bunch of different applications. So you would so, consider uh, MQL a good replacement for the coolant or a good replacement for the neat oil? Coolants, flooded coolants. Okay. Need oils? No. No. Okay. Um, no. We have another question here. It's more like a comment, but you can address that comment. It says, oils may contain some env environmental hazards, chlorine, phosphorus, they may cause hazard affecting workers. So uh, probably they are referring to these additives being uh, used in MQL and misted into the air and create the hazard or? There, there isn't the hazards because you're not doing that much mist. The only when you're doing a little bit of mist is on the single channel. And, and, and now, you know, you're talking about, you know, I think we all know, uh, some of the restrictions on EP additives. Okay. Namely okay. the, the, the chloroparaffins. So, so uh, you know, the, these oils aren't 100% uh, put together by just a, a neat oil and nothing else in them. You know, a, 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 as the lubrication demand goes up, you can put in the more environmentally safe type uh, uh, additives that are accepted today for EP. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't have any more questions in the chat. I know that a couple of people have questions that they want to ask. Please unmute yourself and ask the question directly from Brian. Hello, Brian. Yes. yes. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I've worked as a drilling fluid engineer in oil field, and I have used lubricants uh, to provide cooling uh, and lubrication, heat dissipation and cooling uh, while drilling to, to enhance the rate of penetration, the drilling rate of penetration, I mean. So uh, my company used to develop um, ester-based lubricants palm base like the palm methyl esters were the main um, esters but from my own experience like one of the requirements we had to fulfill to enter into oil and gas market was to pass the hpht test the high pressure high temperature tests so um, one of the problems I use that uh, I use our products in both uh, water-based muds uh, and uh, I mean water-based drilling fluids and oil-based drilling fluids. One of the biggest challenges was 
during the R&D was the fact that there are so many other ingredients involved in the drilling fluid. And then when you expose those esters to high temperature and high pressure, I'm talking about temperatures that could go up to like when you do high pressure, high temperature drilling, we go beyond 400 degrees Celsius. And what happens was in, in the lab, we used to have some tests that would simulate the HPHT drilling environment. And then we would end up, I would end up, all those esters would end up having hydrolysis and oxidation with the water and all the other additives and then i would end up with a polymer bump at the end so um we had to do a lot of tweaking a lot of um, uh, change in our manufacturing line to stabilize the esters and i would say we had to also um blend the base oil, it, it it would lower the biodegradability of it, but that, that was the compromise we had to make in order to enter the oil and gas industry. So the question I have for you, have you had any case studies of this uh, MQL in oil and gas industry? And do you have any high pressure and high temperature testing? Like, would you know up to how many, how much PSI and what temperatures can this be stable? There, there's been no studies that I know of with the fluids we use. And, 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 and you know, th th this is just going on, on my, uh, you know, knowledge of, of the metalworking fluid business to be used in, 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 in drilling applications. But, I mean, and then, you, you know, the, the temperature limits on, on, on the chemistry that that's what you have to fall by, you know. Esters fall, esters, uh, uh, PAOs, PAGs, uh, the, the fluorine-based uh, chemistries. They all have temperature limitations, so that that's what you have to follow. So uh, you know, I mean, obviously th th there's heat generated uh, when uh, when uh, we use those MQL fluids and the amount we use, but uh, we we as a company ha have not done anything with delivery systems, with fluids, or anything else when it comes to the uh, oil and gas uh, well drilling industry. So I hope that answers your, your question just based on my industry knowledge and, and, and things like that. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, we have one more question. Uh, looking at the surface finish of the parts, switching from a coolant flooded system to MQL, do we improve the surface finish of the parts or we get the same quality? You improve it because uh, the, the lubrication, uh, you, you're not, you, you can do a lot smoother uh, surfaces with the MQL. Okay. Okay, so I don't have, uh, well, there is one more question that says, how much oil means minimum quantity? Is there an exact definition of that? Say, uh, on this application, we might use 0 0.05 liters per hour. It's all based on the process and, and the operating uh, uh, parameters that you figure out are there, and then you can go there. So uh, it's, it, it doesn't vary a lot, but, but, but it, it uh, so, uh, that would be my my interpretation of how I right now would uh, answer uh, answer that question. So I think that depends on a product, probably uh, workpiece size, the passes yep. that you need to move back and forth to make the work, or something like that, right? Yeah, for, for the saw blades, and, and and then our machining. If it's a long machining cycle, you know, you, obviously your consumption of fluid is going to be higher. Uh, for that application. Okay. So I don't have any more question on the chat. Is there any other questions um, in the audience that you want to unmute yourself and ask if you wish? No? Okay. Thank you very much, Brian. Thanks, everybody. So we get uh, four or five minutes uh, break and we come back.